Welcome back and welcome to week 216, Prompt A of the Cell Block Scorch. I am Pesci and I hope everybody's having a lovely, lovely day today. The prompt given by Red is all people have experienced legs in one form or another. Okay, so as soon as I read that prompt, I knew I had to write about creatures, right? So I love, 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 love all kinds of different fantasy creatures, and I know quite a few that don't have legs. So I decided to write about a couple of those. Um, and the title is To Walk or Not to Walk. Let's get into it. Golden hair and golden eyes and a golden tail. That was the mermaid. Purple spines and purple eyes and purple scales. That was the amphitheater. Some might think them unlikely friends, but they got along just fine. The amphitheater, Zephyr, considered the entirety of the island to be her hoard and took a vested interest in the livelihood of every resident. The mermaid, Arion, ended up stranded in a lake in the middle of the island by a tsunami some months ago. At the time, Zephyr was frantic, facing the approaching wave and attempting to use her flames to stall the water. For a week afterward, she'd been busy checking on wildlife all across the island, trying to save the plants and mourning her losses. By the time she finally made it to the lake, Arion had completely overturned the delicate ecosystem there. Zephyr was immensely displeased and immediately attacked Arion. Arion begged to be spared, promising to leave the island and never return if only Zephyr would please transport her to ocean waters. Zephyr agreed and had every intention of keeping her promise, but, well, it took a month for the mermaid's tail to fully heal, and throughout that time, Zephyr checked in on her regularly. They conversed enough that Zephyr grew fond of the tiny interloper. And dragon fondness quickly leads to attachment. By the time Arion was well enough to swim in the sea, she was part of the horde. Arion would have been angry, but Zephyr offered to share magic with her in return for her continued residence on the island. And Zephyr was good company anyway. They spent plenty of time together conversing nearly every afternoon and practicing magic most weeks. Lately, they'd been obsessing over a wild little ritual that could grant them legs for a period of time. Such odd things they are with their gangly limbs, don't you think? Arion mused, flipping through the illustrations of humans. Zephyr took the book from her. No more odd than plenty of other animals with legs. Zephyr took the book from her. No more odd than plenty of other animals with legs. Some on the island swim with tails like yours, some fly with wings like mine, some walk with legs like humans. Nobody on this island has a tail like mine, Zephyr. Arion huffed, lifting said tail out of the water and flicking it so her golden scales shone in the light. Oh, don't sulk. You know what I meant. Are we trying legs, or aren't we? I don't know. The ritual seems doable, but is there really a benefit to a human form? If you could walk, you could see other parts of the island, right? Point. Let's do it, Zephyr. When's the next full moon? And that's how the story ends. Very short this week. Actually, if you listened to the last episode, you'll notice that it was a lot longer than this one. There's some context for that. Back when we first started the Scorch, I was not attending university, and so I had a lot more time on my hands for the Scorch. And then, you know, as time passed, more stress, and, uh, I don't know, a lot of lower effort Scorches. But hey, it was fun. It was cute. It was short. Um, yeah, so the two creatures that I mentioned, right? The mermaid, everybody knows mermaids. But um, the amphitheater, in case you're not familiar, is a type of winged reptile, right? One of the uh, technically dragon classes that is, it has the wings of a dragon, but it doesn't have legs. So it's basically a winged serpent. Anyway, you can look it up if you're interested in learning more, but I thought it was fun to include two fantasy creatures there. On their little island. I think that's all the context I have to say about that Scorch. So I won and prompted the next week, and the prompt that I gave, 
I asked them to write anything involving the seven sins, preferably with lore, because I love the seven sins. I actually have my own story that I'm working on that involves the seven sins, and it is in its infancy, but, you know, hopefully that'll be published someday as, uh, as a series, actually, is the plan. So if you're curious about that, you know, uh, hit me up on social media, I guess. But that's all for this week. And if you would like to check out our Patreon, obviously we have the Losing Scorches, which many of them, some of you will find, are better written. You know, it all depends on the judges' whims of the week who wins. So some of them might be a lot more detailed and more interesting depending on your tastes. And you can find those all on our Patreon. Thanks for tuning in. And keep those fires burning. The Cellblock Scorch is a production of Stellacore, an independent group of nerds sharing their obsessions with the world. We can be reached at thestellacore at gmail.com through comments on your podcast platform of choice, our Instagram, Stella underscore core, and at our YouTube, also called Stellacore. Feel free to check out our other productions on our YouTube channel, our cosplays on Instagram, or if you would like to support our creative endeavors, check out our Patreon or donate to the Ko-Fi of the writer of your favorite Scorches.